That would be my godmother. Um, I still, you know, say my godmother, even though she's gone, um, because she instilled so much inside of me. I appreciate Anne and, and Elnora because she, uh, whenever we would meet her, she'd always be the, the same, warm, loving, but yet and still, no nonsense. You know, till this day, I can still hear her saying certain things. Wow. That was a woman that was full of knowledge. Eleanor was a wonderful librarian teacher, and I remember my girls lighting up the years that they had her and coming home with their wonderful stories of her voice and her ability to tell stories. But one of the things that I really admired about her was that she never met, let anyone feel that they were intruding on her or that they were bothering her taking up time that she didn't really want to spend with them. Yeah, I, you know, I think uh, my fondest memories are, are more of her as a whole because she was very constant. If, my, if myself and my cousins were, were acting up or something like that, it was, now, now, you know, now, now, you quieten down, you know. She just, she instilled order, but in, in a very orderly fashion. She, she could walk into a room and, and really not say a word, and there was just an air about her that would make you just sit up and take notice, and, and you, you respected that woman. I really can't remember ever encountering someone who could command a room like Mrs. Ford. The way she presented herself and interacted with people was pure class. Her just coming into the class and being a presence and you just knew that you needed to give her respect back. And we would sit down on the floor and just be ready to hear her read. Uh, and then I remember uh, being introduced to the librarian, Mrs. Ford. And once a week she would come in here and she would read books with such passion and such theatrics. So she would come in and everybody knew what to say. Yeah, that was, that was her signature calling card, right? And uh, you knew when there was the knock on the door and she stepped inside. I remember her, you know, first she would come into the classroom and, you know, good morning. Good morning, Mrs. Ford. Good morning, first grade. Good morning, Mrs. Ford. Good afternoon, fourth graders. Good afternoon, Mrs. Ford. Good morning, boys and girls. And your response was, good morning, Mrs. Ford. <laughs> good morning, boys and girls. Good morning, kindergarten class. How are you today? Good morning, children. Good morning, Mrs. Ford. How are you? Fine. How are you, Mrs. Ford? Fine. We're fine, Mrs. Ford. How are you? How's the first grade? Fine. How are you, Mrs. Ford? How are you today? We're fine. How second grade? Fine. Family history so far as, as I understand it, our family were free slaves. We came on wagons up to Kansas. Grandpa and Grandma met, they were married, and then they moved their, their house from Bolton to the Sandy Ridge area. And then basically that's where Aunt Elnora, her siblings, my dad, Lawrence Sr., Mom was a middle child, but my grandmother talked about that it was evident when people would be around how very smart that my mom was. 
So my mom started first grade long before she was old enough to, that she probably started first grade, maybe when she was five years old. And my, her younger sister, Ruth, but before she moved to Gary, Indiana, I think she and her sister, Anne Elnora, went to Western Kansas to, to teach. I just said, in Western Kansas, and her cousin was teaching in Lebanon. In order for them to let her out of her contract, she had to find another black teacher that would teach in Lebanon. Uh, this is what is called Old Town. Back then we had redlining, so the African Americans, the black people, this was where we were told to live. I think it's important to address Eleanor Ford and to not whitewash her experiences in Lebanon because I'm sure she had quite the experience. And to me, it's having the patience to not give in to the embarrassment or the anger or what have you that you might be having and to educate your students about the history of not only the town in which we live, Lebanon, but also the community in which we live, Southwest Missouri, also the state we, would, we live in, Missouri, also the nation in and of itself. I feel like it's my duty to do that. When they decided to integrate the schools, they did not want my mom to be a classroom teacher because of the color of her skin. And so my mom, being a very strong lady, did not let that happen without a fight. And so with that came about the position that she would be the librarian. They gave her four schools. There was a used bookstore in Coffeyville. My mom would buy copies of each grade level that she would be teaching. She would spend most of the summer making copies by hand, even though the Laclede County had not given her books for her classroom. Her children always had the current books because of how my mom had spent her money and her summer. Some of us would help her reshell the books. So she would group them according to, apparently, to the Dewey Decimal System, and she'd say, go put these back in the mystery section or go put these back in the science section. So I was helping one day with that. She and I reached for a book at the same time, and I remember my hand landed on her hand. I wanted to know if her skin felt different because it was a different color. She left her hand there. Did she know what I was doing? Yes, I think she knew what I was doing, and she allowed that moment to happen. And of course, when I felt her skin, it felt just like mine. She was my librarian. Mrs. Ford was our librarian. Mrs. Ford was my librarian in elementary school. She was just a wonderful teacher as a librarian, and I always look forward to her. When Mrs. Ford would talk to me in the hallway after I got in trouble, I was getting attention from an adult. And every single lecture in the hallway ended with a hug. She would read with this terrific expression. And she, as she was reading, she would do things with her hands. And I can remember just sitting there mesmerized by that. My mother was pretty much illiterate. So when I had trouble with school, I always went next door and Mrs. Ford always helped me. She set me down at her big dining room table in their little living area, and she would say, now read it to me. So I would read the, the problems, the questions I was having. Now she would say, read it again, read it again. And finally it kicked in. Okay, this is how you figure it out. In fourth grade, uh, my dad died unexpectedly while he and my mom were on vacation. And I had a library book. Given the circumstances, the library book became not important. I dug in my piggy bank and I got out a whole fistful of change um, and I took it up to Mrs. Ford and I handed it to her and she took her hand and covered mine and said, oh honey, you don't owe me anything. Sometimes we just have to give each other grace. I miss Mrs. Ford. I wish that my children had a chance to experience her love, her nurturing and that good afternoon kindergarten class. 
So when she passed, they made a monument to her on this flagpole at the bottom of it. It's a plant dedicated to my mother. Okay, this is a home that I basically grew up in. I have a lot of fond memories of this house. And so that was something, the house really was a source of pride for our family. When we went to visit in 1988, so we stopped in Lebanon, and uh, I can remember Aunt Elnora saying, asking us if we were hungry. I mean, she was just grabbing this and grabbing that, because Aunt Elnora, could, she could burn. And you'll see it in the video. When I, I have to get that video to you. for furniture of this. <laughs> Oh dear. <laughs> you don't want me in this. And hey, look at this. You don't want me to this on you. Why not? I mean, I would like to catch you in your, your natural yes, environment. You. Yes, you would. We're glad that you took time to stop by, you and the family. To well, see I haven't you. seen you two in quite a while. It was good to talk to you again, but especially when I got a chance to talk to you here last night. Oh, look at that frown. <laughs> look at that sneer. Now there's a close-up of Van Elnor. <laughs>